So welcome back, everybody, after uh, lunch. Um, just as a short announcement, dinner will also be in the cantina tonight, if so everybody's on the same page. And the first talk in our afternoon session is by Lucas on building reproducible builds into app with Intoto. Welcome. Is, is the microphone on? Yeah, it is. Um, welcome back from the lunch break. Uh, thanks for having me here. I always feel very welcome at these Debian events, and I'm glad to, to come. Um, my name is Lucas. I'm a developer at a research lab, um, a security research lab at New York University. And I will show you how we built reproducible builds verification into Debian apt using a supply chain verification framework that we developed and which is called Intoto. I have one slide about reproducible builds. Um, I suppose this is not news to you. Let's still walk through it. Uh, a build is reproducible if given the same source code, build environment, and build instructions. Any party can recreate bit by bit identical copies of all specified artifacts. So this is a, a feature that's pretty desirable for a build because it allows us to compare builds or build results. And that in turn allows us to establish a consensus on what the correct result of a build is. And by reverse conclusion, it allows us to detect incorrect builds under quotes. Um, so sh why should we care about incorrect builds? Um, this is a fine selection of attacks and compromises on the software supply chain. So somewhere between writing the code, building, packaging, in, pa packaging it, releasing it, uh, attackers infiltrated the software supply chain and uh, introduced backdoors, malicious code. For attackers, this is very attractive because with a single successful compromise, they can um, impact hundreds, thousands, millions of users. So we should care about uh, checking whether a bill is correct. Um, so the question is how we, how we, how we check that, how we, sh should we all build every software that we want to use ourselves and then, then compare it to, to someone else. So we, we need some tooling for that. And we developed a, um, a setup for rebuilders. Um, actually, it was together with uh, a few people from the reproducible builds community. Um, one of them is here this week. He's not here today, KPC YRD. Um, and some folks in Norway and at, at our university too. They created the setup for rebuilders, which are servers that periodically scan uh, the Debian archive infrastructure for new um, reproducible builds uh, and take the build info file from there and then just blindly rebuild them and make them available to, um, to a client, to, to apt so that when, so actually they make the results available to the client, so that when you install your package, you don't have to rebuild yourself, you just consult uh, a threshold of trusted rebuilders and ask them if they agree on the, on the hash and, and you can decide whether it's okay or not. And Intoto provides the verica verification protocol for that. In Toto is um, I will. It's not so much an Toto talk, but more a rep, um, like a reproducible builds apt in Toto talk. So I won't do the whole in Toto spiel, but uh, explain more with the example of reproducible builds. But in general, in Toto um, allows you to specify all the steps in the supply chain that um, that you want to cover, like tagging a release, um, running tests. Um, creating a build, putting it in, in some, in, into some package. You can define all of this in a uh, so-called layout, these steps. In our case, it's only one step. It's called rebuild. And uh, then you say who's supposed to carry out that step. We call those actors functionaries. Um, you just list a key in your project definition, in your layout, and say this person uh, is allowed to provide rebuild results for me. 
and you can also use thresholds, what we do with the rebuilders. So we say, okay, we want k out of n of our functionaries to provide us build results. In our case, we have, we have currently run, we have a, a rebuilder run at, in our New York University infrastructure. There is one running at the University of Bergen. And I, th I think it would be very good if Debian could run a rebuilder, but basically anyone can run a, a rebuilder. Anyone who has a mildly powerful machine um, can just run rebuilders. And the more there are, the easier or the, the less we have to trust individual rebuilders. So we can define these thresholds in our in total layout. And we can also define um, for, for a step of the supply chain, we can say what should go into a step and what should come out of a step. So the, pro uh, the materials and the products. Um, for a rebuild step, we would define, okay, the sources go into the rebuild step and the binary comes out of the re rebuild step and probably a uh, building for file or some other metadata. And the layout, this project definition is the root of trust, or not the layout itself, but it's signed by a root of trust key uh, and, and serves also as PKI. It uh, ships out the functionary keys. So for instance, the keys of the rebuilders are embedded in the layout. So don't, you don't have to worry about those keys. You just need one key or if you sign the layout with multiple keys, keys you only have to uh, care about the, or worry about those keys. And as I said before, each rebuilder uh, just runs its regular command, like s rebuild, and uh, wraps it in, in our Intoto tooling in order to generate evidence for the steps or this one step of the supply chain. And this evidence lists all the files that went into the step by its hashes and all the, st the files that came out of, of the step by its hashes and puts a signature with its functionary key on it. And when we want to verify it on the client, we just grab all the, the evidence files, the link files from the rebuilders. We take the layout. It's, as I will show you, uh, it best, best way to handle this, the layout is already on the client. It could be installed with apt. And it takes the package from some mirror and uh, runs the total verification routine. And I have prepared a demo for this. Um, on my demo machine. Uh, this is a little app, um, Debian client uh, that has the, trend, the, the apt, our apt plugin for Intoto and reproducible builds um, already installed and pre-configured. Um, there are two or three configuration files that we can take a look at. Um, there is one in and here, um, it lists our rebuilders where we can get the link evidence, the, the Intoto link files from that says, I rebuilt this, I came up with this result. Um, this doesn't establish any trust relationship. As I said earlier, the keys for the rebuilders are in our assigned layout. Um, that layout is here, at this path. I configured it uh, with with my app client that the layout is already there and I will tell the app client to, to load it from there. And this is the root key that's used to sign the layout. So uh, we can take a look at our GPG keychain. Oh, yeah, it's there. It's just a demo key, it's in the, in the demo repo. Um, that's used to, to sign the, the layout and the layout is at Toto root layout. And um, it has this section with steps. Um, and as I said, it's only one step that's called rebuild. And here are the, the keys from the rebuilders. It's only the key IDs. The keys are themselves are at a different, different section in the layout. Um, and one very important thing that I want to show you is a rule that is executed during the uh, verification routine on the client. Um, and that says, okay, match all the dev files 
that I currently am downloading. So it's a, it's a generic rule. It would work with any package. Match, all, uh, match any dev files that I'm currently downloading and trying to install with the products that came out of the rebuild step. And then there is another one. It's like it's a little bit. It works a little bit like a firewall. There is another rule that says, and disallow all other dev files that I have here. Okay, so we took a look at the config file. We took a look at the layout. Um, now we have to do one more configuration step. Um, we have to tell apt to not just download the package from the archive as, as it would do usually but use our Intoto plugin, it's called the transport, um, to perform that verification. And then we say yeah, get update. So you can see here it's already doing something unusual. It's trying to run Intoto uh, on the files that are um, fetched via, uh, while updating but we only care for dev files at the moment, so it's skipped. Uh, let's try to install a package. It's in our mirror. Uh, get install demo package. Oh! -ho. I made this bold and the most important thing blue so that you can distinguish it from the other parts in the app log. Um, that's just for the demo here. So what it did here is it requested the metadata for the demo package from the two rebuilders, um, the, the Intoto link metadata, and it got it. And then it loaded the layout. It verified the signature of the layout with the, with the root key that we configured. And then it ran the Intoto verification with the, with the rules for the artifacts and the hashes matched, so everything's good. Um, now I will show what happens if our mirror is malicious. For that I will first remove the package uh, to download it again later. Oh, package. And then we update the sources list to not use our good mirror, but our bad mirror, which will serve as a malicious um, that package for the, for the demo program we have here. And I do a up get update to get the files from the bad mirror. And then I do an up get install demo package. And it blew up, which is good. Um, <laughs> it did the same thing as before. It asked the same rebuilders as before for the same package to provide the evidence for the rebuild. Uh, then it loads the layout, it verifies the signature, and it does the total verification, um, which, as I said earlier, when, when we looked at the layout, tries to, to match the binary that I, I'm trying to install with the binary that was created on the rebuilders. And uh, yeah, we can, we can also, we can take a quick look. We still have time. Yeah, we can take a quick look at this uh, link metadata, the evidence that the rebuilders serve us. Let's see if this... It's, it's really simple. It's not a big file. It's only because we only, we only record, we don't do anything with the, the materials, which are the sources, so we don't record them right now. But later we should record them. So we, at the moment, we only care for what got spit out of a rebuilder, and that was the Debian package. And we say, we, we store the hash, and we give it a signature. And the total verification routine can use that together with the layout to see if everything is good. Um, and I have one more slide. So you might think, okay, 
in, it, it looks cool, but it's still kind of complicated. Um, I did it in Toto Talk at DEPCON 2017, and back then I showed how you use the command line tools and you have thousands of uh, command line arguments, and people told me back then that it looks really cool, but it's way too complicated. And I think it got a lot better. Now you have three or, or two config files that are maybe already in place when you install it, and you just run apt install. Um, and you will need something to, um, to, to compare the hashes locally with the hashes from Rebuilder, so that's tooling. And the cool thing about Intoto is that you can, it's, it's really generic and you can arbitrarily extend it up the supply chain. So you don't, in this example, we only check for evidence from rebuilders, but the supply chain is longer. There is, a, there is a downstream repo, and we want to be sure that only what came out of the downstream repo went into the rebuilders. And even before there, there is an upstream repo. And in total allows for, so um, Toto is only concerned about steps, and all of these are just steps for in total. And you can say, I have these steps. And, um, and then we have this little rule language where um, where you say what came out of this step must go in this step and some other rules too. And you can have testing steps and other building steps and so on. Um, that's it for today. Uh, thank you very much. I'm open for questions. Please reach out to us. I was able with help from some of you guys to package in Toto and to transport this week. It's not yet uploaded, but uh, it builds with, with uh, as built. So yeah, I hope Holger and I can sit together later today or sometime and upload them so that it's really as easy as app get install in Toto and then app get install anything and um, it's verified against rebuilders. And also the rebuilders themselves, we need help with that. They, um, for this demo, I just mocked them. Um, there are running rebuilders that actually rebuild, but we could do do some more work on those. Um, if you have extra time and like the project, reach out to me or my colleagues, some of these friendly fr faces here. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the talk. We have time for a couple of questions, if there's any. Please step up to the microphone. It's clear, just app get install this in Toto. It's clear, yeah. It it's easy, it's super easy. Just wait for any, oh, there's one. Yes. Uh, hi, so I'm not sure if I totally understand. So you replace a uh, normal apt uh, repository with, uh, which is signed by Debian keys, but by those repositories that are signed by other keys? <laughs> Basically, because I've seen many keys and signatures and so on, and currently in Debian we have this Debian keyring which, uh, which has all the keys which, which are used to verify signatures of packages. How do you yeah. manage keys for rebuilders? Uh, that's a, qu a good question. Um, so it's not, not invasive. It, it doesn't change anything with the Debian mirrors, uh, unless you want it to, unless you want them to, to or, the, or the Debian archives to provide link metadata as well that can be matched with the, what the rebuilders provide. But those are different entities. So you have, um, let me see, this was my attempt. That's not really good. There should be another component here. That's where you fetch the deb file from. And the rebuilders, they don't give you the deb file, they don't give you the binary, they just tell you, I built the binary, this binary that you're trying to install, and I came up, it yielded this hash. So you just have something in addition that provides you metadata that you can check against what you're trying to download from, from Debian. And, and as I tried to say, in the layout you also ship out the keys of of these rebuilders, so it has its own P PKI kind of. You don't rely on the on the Debian developer keychain. 
So you just change the transport, not the rest of the URI. Exactly, yeah. So actually what I did is, it's a, <laughs> a man in the middle, apt and HTTP. So I still use the HTTP transport, but I just relay everything that comes from apt. apt asks me um, or tells me I want to download this thing from this HTTP URL and I tell it HTTP transport to do it and then when HTTP comes back to me telling me I downloaded this, I wait to tell app to install it and do my verification. Only if it verifies properly will I tell app to go and install it. Okay, so I have a question. What if a package is not reproducible? Will you just refuse to install it? Or in that case, it just installs fine? Or there is a, a country. It's also a good question. There is a, because on our current rebuilders, oh, I, I removed that. A bit bigger? Yeah, and also I have to show you a different configuration file from the tests. Ooh. Sorry. No. Well, that that does show it. No, no, whatever. Switching between VI and Sublime is weird. Um, I have this no fail option. <laughs> uh, that just that just uh, lets you still, if even if you use the transport uh, and do the verification, still lets you install it, even if it fails. Right, but what if I wanted to fail if a package is reproducible, but there's it's it's the wrong hash. But if the package is not reproducible, I just want to install it without in total interfering it. You mean you see where there's a third? Yeah. Um, that's okay. That's currently that that's possible. Um, currently, it will also fail if there is no if if there is no metadata or it it doesn't it doesn't dis distinguish between packages that are reproducible or not. But it, it could be it could be changed. Um, I mean, ideally, at some point, everything is reproducible. Uh, until then, it, it's probably a good idea to. Yeah, exactly. But if people see either it fails on the first package they want to install, which is not reproducible, and then they just switch it off, and then they switch it off. Uh, you know, you see what I mean. So that does make sense. That's why that's that's why I have this option where it still shows you the log. Okay. Um, I think that the log could be improved. Uh, it could, and it could even be maybe interactive. The it tells you it failed either because it's not reproducible or because it is reproducible, but um, s there was another problem. Uh, do you still want to install it? Uh, you might have said it, and I'm sorry if I missed it, but what is actually taken into account when you compare packages? Is it just, like, it's probably not just a hash of the Debian, of the dev file, but what is actually... It is just a hash of the dev file. Okay, so what wouldn't a, a, a regenerated dev file wouldn't it con contain like uh, timestamps, change logs, something that might not if uh, it's reproducible. So that's okay. the goal of reproducible of reproducible okay. builds. That uh, when you build it under the same circumstances, same build environment. There was the this first slide I had. Okay, I, I thought it would just apply to the contents of the the package, but it also applies to the package itself. So uh, I think. I'm not sure, Holger. <laughs> can you can you repeat the question? Uh, what is actually being looked at when you try to compare or when you try to to uh, detect a, a reproducible build? Do you actually look at the contents of the package or is or just the package as a whole? So is the con the, the package itself also reproducible? I think it's re uh, that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. So in my demo, as I said, I just mocked the rebuilders, but we have m rebuilders and I looked at some packages where both rebuilders uh, rebuilt them and they have the same hash. So I, I always figured that the dev file, that the goal of reproducible builds is that the dev file is re uh, can be compared. Um, I think great what you're doing, but I always worry about end users. Yeah. Um, how are we going to get the configuration um, there, and is it all guessable or discoverable? 
And if it is discoverable, how do you keep that secure? Um, it, I'm not sure I understand. So it shouldn't be secure, well, se secured by obscure. Hmm? You've got these rebuilders. Yeah. Yeah, and you've got to put, find them and put them into your config. You've got to get these re re rebuilders. And exactly. You, and you've got to find them and put them into your config. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a very user friendly process at the moment. At the moment, so how I created the package now in the last days, I copy a config with the rebuilders that currently exist. And if you, my idea is that if you update this app transport, the Intoto app transport, you update it. With, with new rebuilders that exist and that are endorsed by the Debian community. And the, the URLs themselves are not directly the trust, uh, the, they, they don't establish the trust co connection, but it's the keys, so the, this root layout. And there we have a discussion, who, who is allowed to sign the root layout? Is it the one who manages the, the app transport package or it could be a quorum of people. So on the on the GitHub page, on this GitHub page, there is an issue where we discuss this. Um, it's a it's not an easy question, but I think most of the configuration can be shipped out when installing the transport. Um, some of the configuration should should the user should be able to to put it there him or herself. Um, I'm always for security faults, but it w if if you if it then ends up that you can't use it, as Michael said, then then it's not worth it. So it's better to maybe have a uh, an easy adoption or easy ro rollout configuration. Are there any more questions? If not, let's uh, thank Lucas again.